Hi, my name is Andrew, and I've got some really big news. Dungeon Scrawl is now part of Roll20. And with me, I have a few friends that we're going to run through a game together, showing you how these tools might work and be integrated together in the future. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Hey. So we've got Clay, we've got Jamie, and we've got Danny, all helping me tell this story of our adventure. We're going to be running through this cave, but there's a problem. I did not prepare. I did not make a map, unfortunately, but have no fear. We all are going to play on Dungeon Scrawl because we can do that. So let's see what Dungeon Scrawl can do for us. Okay, so I'm here on the homepage of Dungeon Scrawl, and you can see that it's uh, old school dungeon maps made easy, right? Well, I'm just going to hit this start scrolling button. You can see here that this gives us a blank canvas. So let's say you all are walking through a forest and you're not paying attention. Before you know it, Danny, your character, has fallen through the earth into an unknown cave. Clay and Jamie, you both decide you've got to help Danny because maybe their leg is broken. You jump down and you find yourself in a room. We're going to start by, let's see, I want to have it to be rough because this is a cave that is naturally forming. I'm going to use this polygon tool really quickly to make this is probably good right about here and i'm gonna just pull this a little bit to make it so that looks kind of like a cave you all are in this little cave and what you see here is a couple of paths down to the southeast and southwest the first one comes down about here or so and let's see kind of goes to there and it's rough so it looks kind of like that the other one comes this way Oop. I didn't do that. Let me undo, actually. I can just hit undo by doing control Z in this here. And there's this other little tunnel that allows me to make, yeah, there we go. You all are in this main cavern. And as you are looking down to the southwest here, you can start to see light peering in. Maybe there's other cracks. If you hadn't hit this one, you might have hit others as they came through. And it seems like this is still kind of surface. There's plants growing in and you can kind of see roots growing down and you can't kind of see because it takes a bend the other side goes down into the earth and it gets really dark what do you guys do i'm scared of the dark so i'm pushing te the team towards the light you're gonna go yeah look down that tunnel okay let's see what's at the end of this tunnel real quick i want to scoot down just a tad we're gonna make another uh, area here i'm gonna use this polygon tool here and uh, make it sort of an irregular shape as well. So as you all kind of peek around the corner here, you see a room that's roughly shaped like this. But at the back of that room, you can see that there's a little hallway that peeks out. There's still little spotlights coming in through the greenage, that, like it's subterranean in some places. Do you want to continue on this one or do you want to maybe go back and see what the dark lies? I'm not as scared of the dark might be worth checking out do you think maybe the two connect back here danny i mean i don't want to put you in a, a weird position here but i can protect you i mean i'm okay with splitting the party we covered danny with a bunch of leaves yeah i'm gonna take a quick nap <laughs> Clay and i are gonna do a reconnaissance mission yeah, you, you do like a little short rest as you come around this area you start to see it open up into yet another cavern that seems to be right next to the other one but is down below it you can tell you are kind of going down and it opens up and, and you can't see much past this area. You're not sure if it continues on past, but it looks more to the south. You could explore even more if you wanted to. Can we keep going, Clay? I think we made a mistake. Let's you go do? back to Danny. All right, and maybe head down the straight hallway then. Before you leave, you hear a little splash and bloop. you think there's maybe a pond over here. I'm going to actually keep this rough, but I'm, I'm going to use my original sort of regular polygon tool here. I'm going to make it as one side and I'm going to just say that there is a little pool here. Actually, before I do that, I want it to be on its own layer. Let me do its own layer here. There is a pool here. And as you start to leave, you start to see that there is actually a little pond here or something like that. And there was a little splashing sound in that water. So I'm going to change the color to the floor to, to be blue. And the walls are going to be like a, a deep sort of blue here just to kind of really define those. And I'm going to change the floor back to white so we can tell the difference there. Right before you leave this cavern, you start to see, like, 
oh, there's a pond here. We start to think, hmm, what else is in there? What else could that be? Maybe it wasn't so smart to split the party here. I'm not afraid of the dark, but I am afraid of that pond. <laughs> there's there's nothing more creepy than like still dark water. water. Yeah. <laughs> the, no darkness, you can't see below what is there. As you get back to Danny, you come back trying to hide the fact that maybe you're scared of what was in the other room, or are you you're gonna tell tell Danny? No, no need for him telling, to know. We don't want to let Danny know it was right. One thing you start to realize is that that room at the back or that that sort of hallway is is actually a hallway but it's not naturally forming like the rest of this cave has been it looks like it's actually been dug out and there are cobblestones on the floor and the walls seem to actually be like solid and structured somebody made this thing what do you do hmm i mean i'm curious let's go down that hallway you can see i've got this rough hewn but i just said it wasn't rough so I'm going to undo that again, and I'm going to come back and say, turn off the roughness so it's not so rough. As you come this way, you start to see that this path leads in a different direction, and it kind of tees off. There's two different paths here, and this path down to the south actually has a door. And when you come to this door, it looks ornate, like somebody's carved this door and put it in here for a specific purpose. I'm just going to walk up to the door and knock on it. You knock on the door, nothing happens. But you do realize that there's a hollow sound on the other side of it. This isn't a door to like a closet. There's something bigger behind here. With my good leg, I'm just going to kick the door open. As you kick it open, you hit it right where it actually latches. And you realize this door actually wasn't ever latched. And <laughs> as it swings open, you get a brief glimpse of the rest of the room that is on the other side. You don't see everything but it is roughly about this big and you don't see what's toward the south when the, uh, the door comes back and hits you. <clears throat> Clay and uh, Jamie, what are you all doing as you see this? I'm Jamie for Danny. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad it's not me up the front getting smacked around by that door. In this room, it, it, it's not dark, but it doesn't have sunlight. There's actually like some sort of, maybe there was fire at the back or something as the door kind of settles into its sort of resting position. As you go through the door and open it carefully this time, you realize that uh, at the back of the room, there is a small altar, maybe? Well, it's about this big. And on this sort of dais, you can see that there is a treasure chest. Let's see, I'm going to actually come over here and I'm going to try to find a treasure chest real quick. Um, I just need something quick just to get it here. Thank you very much, Daniel F. Walt Hall. There is a chest. It's actually pretty big. I'm going to just spin it around here because it's going to face you all as you come in. As you, all three of you kind of funnel into this, you also realize too, I'm going to use this wall tool here and I'm just going to make a little wall here. Oh, I don't want two walls. I'm going to undo that. And you see steps that are here. So I'm going to create some steps here, uh, just like that. These steps go up, but there is a treasure chest here. And let's do like a little wall here to show that this is like a die of some kind. You can kind of step up on it. What do you all do? Can I investigate that treasure chest or just get out of here? Eh, it's, there's probably nothing in that treasure chest. I vote treasure 100% all the time. Like, can you check the treasure for us? Yeah, I'll go up and check it. It's my turn. As you approach it, the treasure chest doesn't seem to be locked. And as you kind of feel it a little bit and try to open it, a, a large mouth with teeth come out a tongue just spills almost like it was rolled up in there Bloop, and it is trying to eat you and that's where we're going to end for today wouldn't it be really great if this had tokens right if we could have moved the tokens around as we explored it you could see the monster as it came and you could see maybe your character sheets on top of that how many hit points you had left or something like that it would be really great if dungeon scrawl was integrated with Roll20. And that's exactly what we hope to do in the future, is to, to take a real time map tool like Dungeon Scroll and put it into a VTT so you have all of it together and you have a true zero prep solution. You can make the dungeon as your players are exploring it. Thank you all for joining me today and helping me sort, sort of play this little adventure. Sorry, Clay, that you are probably gonna get eaten by a mimic. I look forward to seeing what more we can do with this with this tool in the future and stay tuned. Thank you very much. Bye.